Hello people, today I'll be doing a video response to ADU's question How does one achieve tank balance? First, we must define the term tank balance and I define it simply as a condition in which the plants are growing well and there is no visible algae growth Our primary concern is to achieve good plant growth As Tom Ba always says Take care of your plants and the algae will take care of itself If you have a tank of plants that are growing vigorously they will modify their environment around them and they will outcompete the algae Thus our goal is to create an environment that favours a healthy plant growth at the same time um, having an environment that does not cause algae spores to bloom and one of the main causes for algae spores to bloom is ammonia so having a good filtration system, good flow as well as a healthy plant mass to absorb ammonia from the water is crucial for an algae free tank There are many many factors that contribute to plant growth However today I'll be only talking about one I'll be talking about nutrient dosing because I think that it is the one that people uh, most want to hear about Let us look at two commonly used dosing systems uh, that produce good results The first system that is well known to most of our friends in America is the EI dosing system also known as the sledgehammer <laughs> In the EI dosing system usually it is done through using uh, dry chemicals such as potassium nitrate and this allows a large fertilizer dose to be done cheaply In the EI system MPK as well as iron and traces are dosed in large amounts 3 times a week and this provides a non-limiting level of nutrients for plants to grow Large water changes, about 50% or more, are done each week to reset levels to prevent them from getting too high With the nutrient uh, part of the system taken care of through heavy dosing it allows the user to focus on tweaking light and CO2 uh, to a balanced point where the plants are growing well but there should be no visible algae growth the theory behind this is that the nutrients themselves do not cause algae growth It is the lack of a competitive plant mass that causes algae spores to bloom Thus, in a well-balanced tank, whether is it MPK or FE or traces Even having a high level present in the water supply will not cause algae growth If you have a tank that is full of healthy growing plants The next system we are examining is the ADA approach if we follow the ADS commercial line of fertilizers At the heart of ADS system is its very rich substrate which provides a very high amount of ammonia as well as nitrates which provides a non-limiting source of nitrogen for plants In the ADS system, a high level of potassium is dosed on a daily basis Iron is also dosed regularly, 3 times a week However, compared to the levels uh, recommended by EI, these are much lower Averagely, the ADA dosing regime is much lighter compared to EI This is especially so for phosphates which ADA liquid fats are very light in For nitrogen, the substrate provides a non-limiting amount uh, In terms of potassium, ADA fats has a lot of potassium So the biggest differentiating factor is that it's very light in the phosphates department the iron dosing levels of ADA are also significantly lower compared to EI by almost a factor of 10 Either one of these systems can grow great tanks and there are examples all over the internet of people successfully using one system or the other I find that for higher lighting tanks, if you are rushing to complete the tank uh, EI gives faster results It is the combination that gives the fastest growth However, in uh, using the ADA approach with uh, leaner fertilization and slightly slower growth uh, Sometimes it's this combination together with low temperatures bring out the best colors Learning from both approaches, this is the current system that I use First off, a good substrate is crucial A good substrate does a lot of work in terms of fertilization So the fractured clay substrate such as fluoride, eco-complete, as well as just plain sand um, I stopped using those years ago Nowadays, I only have two choices If I'm going for a low-cost method of doing up a tank, I'll choose soy um, If the cost is not a concern, I'll buy ADA or, or its equivalents With regards to water dosing, potassium and nitrates both do not contribute at all to algae growth 
So even if your tank is off balance, you can dose this too like it's free. Um, and that is what I do. However, when it comes to phosphates and iron, these are great for bringing out the colours in the plants. However, I will only dose this to um, more regularly after the tank has stabilised when the plants have been there for a couple of weeks and have grown their roots into the substrate. If the tank is not stabilised yet, I find that this uh, phosphates and iron can ex exacerbate algae issues. Somewhere along the you know, aquatic history, people came to the conclusion that somehow having a higher nitrate levels would hurt livestock. But if you see uh, Tom Barr's tank, where he has like 50 to 80 parts per million nitrates and he has high grade CRS breeding, it is clear that nitrates do not cause any harm to livestock unless at extreme quantities. The last tip I have for you guys is learn to use dry fertilizers. Use, learn to use dry chemicals like potassium nitrate and potassium sulfate. They are as effective as the liquid fertilizers but comes at a fraction of the cost. To give your estimation of how much I've spent on fertilizer for the past 5 years, I've probably spent about $20, and let's say $20 US dollars that pays for all my fertilizers for all the tanks that I've run or everything you see in this slideshow for the past 5 years. That's about it. I've attached a link for the calculator available online for calculating the proportion of dry fruits to use. And this is the end of my video. Thanks for watching guys.